Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my plan for a cut flower garden. I'll talk through the flowers that I chose and why I chose them, and we're also going to go ahead and start the seeds. I'm gonna show you where in my yard I plan to put this cut flower garden. And in a follow-on video, we'll transplant my starts in the garden and I'll follow up on how the flowers are doing. Let's get into it. Hey guys, my name's Jen. I'm here in Melbourne, Florida. Melbourne is in central Florida on the east coast, right near Cape Canaveral. If you look closely, you can see that rocket launch right behind me. Oh, it's right there. Two years ago, I quit my engineering career to become a stay-at-home mom and I started backyard gardening. I'm totally hooked on it and I love to share some tips and some of my learning along the way. So let's talk about why I'm doing a cut flower garden. Whenever I go to a friend's house or I have company over, I always want flowers in vases or I want to give flowers as a hostess gift. And ever since I started vegetable gardening, I just feel odd going to the store to buy a bouquet of flowers when I really should just be growing them and helping the pollinators come to my own vegetable garden, helping the bees and the butterflies. So I've been wanting to do a cut flower garden for those reasons for a long time, but until recently, I hadn't quite realized um, how important it is to have like a butterfly garden or, or to grow food specifically for the native bees. So I bought this book, it's called A Beginner's Guide to Florida Gardening. This is by Jacqueline Litton, who's also the woman behind the Wild Floridian YouTube channel. And it's a great book, it boils things down to um, a great level for beginners. And she has um, actually two or three chapters on butterfly gardening and how to save the bees. So she talks a lot about using native flowers and just the importance of trying to help those populations stay alive versus choosing to use pesticides and killing them off. I'll put a link in the description box below to the book if you want to check it out. If I were to boil those chapters down to a couple points, it's basically you need to keep the populations of butterflies and bees up so that we can continue to have populations that would support natural pollination of crops. And also just because the importance of the food chain. You start at the bottom with the tiniest insects like the caterpillars and then you move on up the chain to the butterflies and the bees and the birds. And so if you are using pesticides to kill the food at the bottom of the food chain, you're going to end up somehow affecting the populations of the birds and the bees up at the higher part of the food chain which we don't really want to do, right? We want to save the wildlife. So the way I'm going to do it this year is by finally planting my cut flower garden. Let's walk over to the, the portion of my lawn that I plan to use, and I'll show you kind of the dimensions that I'm going to be looking at. So this is my backyard. I'm standing on the lanai looking out towards the retention pond. What I'm going to do is target a spot on, on the opposite side of the fence. So let's walk over there and I'll show you. So we're on the opposite side of my fence and you can see I've got this yellow tape measure on the ground and it's showing that this is 150 inches. I am planning to leave some space on either side because I want to do something like some edging, like some stone edging around it. And this is the gate. Yes, I know it's broken. I need to fix it and I will probably extend it down five feet. So we're looking at a, uh, basically a rectangular space that's 150 feet by 60, I mean, sorry, <laughs> 150 inches by 60 inches. When I was trying to choose which flowers to plant, I went straight to the UF IFAS website and they have these infographics that I'll display um, for each month that shows you whether you're in North Florida, Central Florida, or South Florida, which flowers you should start. So the first one we're going to do is amaranth. This one's really tall, actually. It's, um, it looks like it'll be five feet to eight feet tall. So this is going to be in the back layer of my cut flower garden. The next one, we're kind of going to go in height order. I want to go I want the back layer to be the tallest, and then I want the flowers in front of it to be shorter and shorter and shorter. We're going to do five different types of flowers. 
Amaranth is the tallest. It'll be in the back. And then we've got Celosia. I tried to learn the correct pronunciation of these, so um, let me know if I'm wrong. I think I'm right. Celosia. This one reaches a height of 30 inches to 40 inches. Then I'm going to do a milkweed. Milkweed is great for butterflies. And this one reaches 24 inches to 36 inches tall. Um, then we've got Zinnia. I chose this key lime blend. I think it's going to be a cool um, contrasting color to put in there. Um, it's like chartreuse and then white. And the height is 24 inches to 48 inches tall. And the last flower is Impatience. Impatience is the shortest one. It's only 8 inches to 12 inches tall. So I looked at that infographic and then I did research on several of the flowers in the list and I was trying to choose ones that I could create this hierarchy of height. Um, so it would be visually appealing and then also it would be nice to put in a vase where you have something that has a really tall stem and then you can mix and match. Now I will say I think I'm missing like the accents that would be in a bouquet. So I might add that at a later point. But today what we're gonna do is seed start these five different flowers. Now, I'm pretty sure you could just plant these in the ground as long as you added some nutrients like compost and flower tone or flower fertilizer. But what I'm gonna do is seed start. The reason I'm doing seed starting today, honestly, is just because my space is not ready. <laughs> I'm gonna buy myself some time by starting seeds instead of planting directly in the ground. My next video is going to be all about prepping that space. So we're going to create the edging around that rectangular space and then fill in the center with some fertilizer and compost. Um, I need to do a little bit more research about all of that to make sure I'm putting the right type of soil in. So hit that subscribe button if you want to follow along and see the entire project. Let's go back to the plan for a minute. Remember the width I'm looking at is 150 inches and the length is about 60 inches. This amaranth needs a spacing of 18 inches, so I figured I can do one row spaced 18 inches apart, and that will give me eight of these plants. So what I'm gonna do is seed start eight cells of amaranth. Celosia needs to be spaced 12 inches apart, so I'm targeting 12 different plants of celosia. So I'm gonna start 12 cells of celosia. Zinnia is also 12 inch spacing, but I'm gonna do 11 just so I, I can kind of um, alternate or stagger the planting. So one row would be 12 milkweeds, for example, and then the row right under that would be 11 zinnias that are offset by about six inches or so. Milkweed is similarly spaced at 12 inches, so I'm gonna do 12 seed starting cells of milkweed. And then we've got impatience. Impatience is spaced 12 inches apart, so I'm gonna have 11 of those for the same reason. We're staggering the planting. Now, before we start filling the cells, let's talk about some things that may go wrong in my cut flower garden. <laughs> Number one, I need to figure out some greenery. If I wanted to make bouquets, you need like some accent greenery um, to go in there. And I haven't planned for that yet. So maybe I'll try to add that um, in the coming week. Number two, I don't know how long it's going to take for these plants to develop and bloom. I have no idea actually if they're going to bloom at the same time. So that is obviously going to affect whether I can make a bouquet or not. <laughs> um, but you know, I'm not going to let that stop me. I could do research for um, a million days or I could just do it and find out that way. So let's get started with the seed starting. I've got my miracle Grow seed starting mix. I've done this before where it seemed like one bag, this is one um, or eight dry quarts, fills up all of these cells. I have a video that I'll link above that's a full review of this seed starting bundle if you want to check it out. To start, the soil seems pretty dry, so I'm going to start by adding water. I'm expecting to use the whole bag, so I'm going to put the water directly in the bag. All right, so I got at least this first half of the bag a little damp. I'm going to put the seed starting cell directly in there and press it down. Now I did the math. I think I'm going to use every one of these cells. I just added up how many I need. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fill up all of these cells, making sure to press down the soil so I get, um, get rid of all the air pockets in there. 
I'll show you this first one, and then I'm gonna fill the rest of these with soil off camera, and I'll come back for sowing seeds and labeling my cells. Let me show you what the seed starting cell looks like when it's full. I tried to press it down pretty good so you can see these slits on the side. There, there seems to be no air pockets of soil. Um, so this is what I'm working with. I'm gonna go ahead and fill up all of these and I'll be back in a few minutes. Now we're ready to sow the seeds. I'm gonna start with amaranth. It's from Botanical Interests. I'm going to fill up eight. I've got my labels done. I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. Now it says seed depth barely cover a group of three seeds every 18 inches and then you'll thin later. So I'm going to follow those instructions and just try to do three at a time. Oh man, these are tiny little seeds. All right, I'm gonna take some potting mix and just barely add some mix on top. Barely cover. I'm gonna go ahead and put the humidity dome on there. There. Now let's do celosia. I need 12 celosias. These are just some homemade labels from a milk carton and my label maker. I am going to make a video soon about how I make these labels in case you wanna copy. I've tried like the biodegradable ones from like botanical interest or something, but they just Honestly, it bothers me that they degrade because sometimes they degrade pretty quickly. But these ones, I've tried them so far and they last a long time and I can actually reuse them. All right, so Celosia, again from Botanical Interests. It's got a separate bag on the inside and it says a pinch of seeds every 12 inches. Milkweed, I need 12 as well. So celosia takes seven to 14 days to emerge. Milkweed takes 14 to 28 days to emerge. So I don't wanna put celosia with the milkweed in here because you're supposed to remove the humidity dome whenever they germinate. And it sounds like celosia will be germinated and I'll have to leave the humidity dome on for milkweed. So I'm trying to avoid that. The wind is picking up. Oh, I hate sowing seeds in the wind. Oh, no. Oh, no. No! Ah! A group of two to three seeds every eight to 12 inches. And it's just surfaced up. Don't sow your seeds in the wind. Don't be like me. Done with the impatience. I want 11 zinnias, seed depth a quarter inch. So I finished sowing the seeds. What I'm gonna do now is water from the top. This is what I, this is one of my favorite aspects about this Vigo Garden seed starting cell bundle thing. So you fill it up right here and then it slowly drips to keep that soil moist without washing away those tiny little seeds that we just worked so hard to plant. Now I'm also going to add a little bit of water into the bottom tray just because I don't want anything to accidentally dry out. So just for the, normally I would just kind of squeeze the hose in there, but just for the purpose of showing you, I'm gonna move that out of the way and just add some water to the bottom of this tray. Now some seeds I start indoors and some seeds I start outdoors. These ones I'm going to try to keep outdoors because they're supposed to be planted in August. So they should be able to handle the heat without an issue. But it's August, so if I were to plant something like a cool season crop in the, for the vegetable garden, um, I would certainly do those inside because it's still so hot out. I live in central Florida and it's still like 95 degrees out. So consider that when you're trying to choose a spot to keep your seedlings. Outside in Florida can be okay if it's the season for the crop. If a hurricane comes, I'm gonna bring them inside though. 
That's it for today's video. The next video in this series is going to be me prepping the area on the other side of my fence to plant these seedlings. Then we'll plant them and I'll share another video about making bouquets and cut flowers, assuming everything blooms like I want it to. If you wanna follow along, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.